Okay, so we're just getting started with the lab session for week four of writing Wikipedia articles. We've got a little bit of chat going on in the uh, text chat window. So uh, interested in hearing all of your thoughts and where you're at with the homework and your projects and your ideas. Uh, Rosemary, I, I see you're you're saying you're heading home to La Grande, Oregon, which I think maybe you had mentioned before, but I, uh, I lived in Oregon for about 18 years, so it's nice to meet a fellow Oregonian. And so I've been through La Grande a couple of times. It's just gorgeous out there. Um, so as, as always with our lab sessions, if anyone wants to turn on their mic and just have a casual chat, that's great. Good morning, Sarah. Um, I, let's see, I, I think just uh, to get us started, I, um, I just wanted to pick up on something that we were discussing in the class session. Um, Therese was talking about the, uh, the list of OER repositories that she's been building up to starting on Wikipedia. And um, I had pointed out a book, which I think is a pretty useful book for working on many different articles related to OER, um, which is Neil Butcher's A Basic Guide to Open Educational Resources. And this is, uh, this is a book that was published, I think, about two years ago. I'm going to just load it up in the, um, in the web browser. I'm going to use the, the browsing tool that we actually don't don't use as often often this is the um, the one where it's it's uh, it's basically you can scroll around in the page yourself but if I scroll you won't see it but this is the advantage of this one if you don't remember it is that it's um, it's much faster so it doesn't you don't have as many as much lag um, when you're looking at the page so uh, feel free to interact with this page however you like. If you scroll, it won't affect it for other people. Um, and so I just thought it would be worthwhile to uh, to have a, a look at this book because it's because it's so closely related to the main theme of this course and uh, it's available for free online. So it's a it's it's a pretty easy source to cite. Uh, to get access to, to, uh, to pull in facts to add to Wikipedia articles. Um, I'm going to just click ahead to the table of contents. And as you can see, the, the main, the, the first section is, the first really two sections are kind of the bulk of the book, and then it has a number of really useful appendices. Um, so the first section is, uh, is frequently asked questions. So this really goes to a lot of the very basic, oh, I'm still marked as away. Um, it, this goes to a lot of the basic questions about uh, about OER. So you can see the, um, the the questions here are pretty relevant to an encyclopedia article, especially something that's aimed at a general audience, because um, they're very very basic questions about what is the OER, why is it important, how does it relate to other uh, to to related concepts, how does it connect with related concepts. Um, so I think there's lots of opportunities to use these uh, these basic uh, FAQs to improve the article on OER and, and some related ones. And uh, the next section is called Making the Case for Open Educational Resources. And there are probably some useful pieces in here as well, but this does get into um, the idea of Wikipedia as a uh, well, the, the neutral point of view policy. So um, it might be worthwhile in some articles to say something like, um, Advocates of OER have argued that dot dot dot, um, but you wouldn't want to take things in this section uh, and present them as as the truth. Uh, you'd want to present it as a point of view, uh, neut neutrally as a as a point of view or as a um, a position that has been advocated. Um, and then the one that had originally brought me to it was uh, I think it's Appendix Five and Appendix Six. I think are both very relevant to that project. So Appendix 5 is called Mapping the OER Terrain Online. And this is uh, an overview of a whole lot of different sites related to OER. And then uh, Appendix 6 is a catalog of OER-related websites. So I guess they're, 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 they're very similar, but as you'll see, 
if we click to them, they uh, they list different uh, websites, and they have uh, the the first one actually has kind of more in depth information, and the second one is more a collection of lists. So I thought if uh, I know Sarah G is working with Therese on that project, uh, and if anyone else. Uh, is interested in chatting with them or uh, contributing to that page or really any other OER pages. I think this uh, is a pretty useful resource in general. Uh, I'm going to put the link to uh, I'm going to put the link to it in the chat window. Um, this is, by the way, I I didn't mention before the site that I'm pulling this from is Wikisource. Uh, Wikisource is a, a a website that's it's part of the Wikimedia uh, movement. It's related to Wikipedia, um, and this is essentially a site to capture and do nice formatting on uh, any published work that is in the public domain or is freely licensed. So um, it's it's kind of it's a worthwhile uh, resource to know about. Most of the things on Wikisource tend to be very old because they're things that fall into the, the public domain because they were copyrighted uh, before 1923. Uh, but sometimes there are more recent works that are released under a free license like this one. Uh, this is something that I put a lot of work into. There was a, there was a PDF version uh, online, and that's, that's linked here. Um, but the, the, with the PDF, you don't get to, uh, if, if you just look at the top of this, Page that we're looking at right now, you see there are links to each of the um, each of the categories that are mentioned. So we can click on any one of these, uh, and then there, you know, there basically there there are ways within Wikisource to kind of make it a nicer online resource uh, that's more that can be more useful than a PDF. Um, also, like if you were to print it out from here, you wouldn't have to have it uh, on exactly the same number of pages as a PDF. It would uh, it would sort of expand to fit. You could print it at a larger font size, you could easily do a machine translation by running this through uh, Google Translate. So um, when, there, when there is a version on Wikisource, it can be a real advantage. So uh, that's, that's sort of the, um, the resource I wanted to show you to start things off, but, uh, but maybe we can hear from some of you where your thinking is on your, um, on your homework projects. Um, Glenn, you're, uh, it really would be nice if if we could add this to our Wikipedia watch list. Unfortunately, these these sites are they're they're connected in many ways, but they're the, the watch list feature does not work across sites. Uh, and also, you you won't have your your login account will um, you'll have the same username and password, but you may have to log in separately. To the different sites, uh, there is a, a universal login feature that works most of the time, but not always. Um, so, and you can set your preferences differently on Wikisource than on Wikipedia. So they're not they're not as tightly integrated as you might think. Uh, but this does have its own watch list. So if you uh, if you wanted to watch pages on Wikisource, you could do that in the same way as you do on Wikipedia. Um, you know, I think I, I, I'm going to take a moment. To, as long as we're talking about related projects, uh, I don't think we've gotten into a whole lot about Wikimedia Commons. Uh, I know it's come up a couple of times, but let me just give you a really basic um, look at Commons as well. So this is commons.wikimedia.org. Uh, and so Commons is the site that serves as a media repository for all the Wikipedia, the Wikimedia projects. So, so all of the different language editions of Wikipedia, uh, for Wikisource, for Wikinews, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you upload a picture to Wikimedia Commons, you can place it in a Wikipedia article in French Wikipedia, English Wikipedia, uh, on Wikisource, without having to upload it separately to each of those sites. Um, and Okay, so Jade, you're asking one creates a different user login for Wikisource. So you shouldn't have to. Um, the you should be able to just go to uh, Wikisource to en.wikisource.org, and if you're not logged in, you should be able to click the login button and 
enter the same username and password that you did on Wikipedia. So uh, that I think the account I think is almost always active these days. Uh, there's the the universal login system that connects them was developed a few years ago, and for a while it was kind of buggy, but it seems to be working better lately. Uh, I'm not as up to date as I could be on that, but um, I don't think you're going to have to set up a separate account. You you may have to log in manually, but um, yeah, and then and, and when it's working right, you don't even have to do that. If you're logged into Wikipedia and you go to Wikisource, you should just find that you're already logged in. Oh well, Jade, I'm not sure why that is. Um, the although well, here let's let's um, so okay, I'm going to switch over to the. Um, to the other kind of web browsing so that you can watch my clicks more clearly. And let's take a look at that. I'm going to go back to Wikipedia. So, uh, Jade, there's, uh, there's one uh, preference that I think it would be worthwhile to check, so I'm going to, I'm going to go into that. Um, hopefully I remember where this is. So I'm going to click on Preferences. And let's see. I'm trying to remember where the oh okay so it's on this front page there is this global account status on the on the main tab of the preferences screen so mine says all in order uh, and it tells me how many different sites I've logged into with this account um, and then it'll tell me what those which different projects those are and I can look at, oh, this shows me basically where my home project is. I, I, as you can see, I, um, I, I, this is something that I just sort of take for granted. I don't really, I haven't looked at these screens in a while. Um, so Jade, I think if you, if you pull up that page, uh, I wonder if your global account status says all in order or maybe there's, a, if there's a problem with it, maybe it gives you a message there about what the problem is. Um, so let's let's not take uh, too much more time on that now. But Jade, if it um, if you have further questions later on, you can uh, you can contact me directly, or maybe if we run out of things to talk about, we can come back to this later in the lab session. Um, so let's see. So I was I was just going to give you a little look at Wikimedia Commons. Um, many of you have one of the the. Homework assignments here was to upload a picture. So uh, many of you have found your way to Commons already. See, look at this. I'm I'm not logged in here. So just this is showing you that it's not. Uh, oh, okay, but now I am. So um, yeah, if you click on upload file, you get this is a a pretty nice upload wizard that was uh, it's it's relatively new in the last uh, last few years. So there's this uh, there's this whole sort of cartoon that gives you an overview of how to upload things to Commons, and then you can skip that. Uh, you can click this box to skip it the next time you come if you basically understand all of that, and go to next. And then you can uh, choose your choose what you want to upload, and it's going to walk you through uh, the information that you have to put in when you upload a file. It's especially important when you upload a photo or a video uh, or something like that. That, you, that you're very clear about its copyright status. So if it's a photo that you took, then you need to clearly um, you need to clearly communicate that uh, in this form. It, it'll walk you through how to do that, but make sure that you you read the screens carefully and and fill everything in. Uh, and if it's something that you found on the internet or scanned or something like that, um, you need to be confident that it's in the public domain or freely licensed and uh, and basically express everything that gives you that confidence. So in the US, if it was published before 1923, then it's definitely in the public domain. Uh, there, there's, there are periods more recently than that where if it wasn't explicitly registered for copyright, then it has lapsed into the public domain or if the publisher hasn't renewed things, uh, renewed the copyright, uh, then it would still be in the public domain. Anyway, these are, these are pretty important things to uh, to pay attention to, um, because your files, but if 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 people uh, think that it might not be 
available under a free license or in the public domain, it will be deleted at some point. Um, let's see. And then uh, I'm trying to think of a, let's, let's just pull up a, an example of a, a pretty widely used file. Uh, I'm going to just pull up Barack Obama's uh, presidential portrait. So this is in the public domain because in the U.S., uh, anything produced by the U.S. federal government is automatically in the public domain. Unfortunately, that's not true of state governments or local governments, but, but anything made by the federal government is. Uh, and so if we look on this page, it'll, it gives us a nice uh, description, tells us the official portrait uh, and who this guy is. Uh, it gives us the, the source where it was downloaded from, and it tells us what the, uh, well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to see that it's listed as being released under a free license when it should just be in the public domain, but there may be some reason for that that's not immediately clear. Uh, but then also what I wanted to, sh to show you is uh, if you scroll down, this will list all the different wikis that have, that are using this particular photo. So you can see that, I, I don't know what AB is, um, that there are, so these language codes at the beginning that tells you which Wikipedia you're looking at. Um, but you can see it's in many different language editions of Wikipedia. Uh, and then in certain ones, so on the Arabic Wikipedia, it's also on many, many different pages within that Wikipedia. So. Anyway, I'd really, uh, I'd like to hear from some of you guys. Uh, it's, I, I actually, I have, I've been watching our, our course watch list. Uh, and I haven't seen a whole lot of activity in the last week or so. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested to hear uh, what your take is on the final project. And I, I, I wonder if maybe uh, in the week, ses the week three session, um, if I maybe just kind of, and you know, maybe week three and week four, if I just sort of overwhelmed people with uh, so many different possibilities and maybe it's a little tough to get started. So um, I feel like we're maybe a little bit stuck as a class. And uh, I would like to help you. <laughs> I, I assume that you're all here because you want to actually be um, be learning by doing uh, and working on articles. And if there's anything that I can do to um, to kind of help move that forward, now's a great time to bring it up. <laughs> Welcome back, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. So this is Rosemary. I have a question. I've, I've uh, had a hard time getting into the class because I'm trying to do too many things. So that's nothing have to do, I think, with any of your explanation. But I do have a, a sort of a conceptual question. I was have been working, a little, the little that I have done, I've been working on that uh, website that's about the interactive um, simulations, the FET interactive one. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. That's great. And and you're saying okay. you've been working on that. Sure. Uh, so I'm still interested in, in a little bit of clarification about the difference between what I would do as an academic for a literature review and an encyclopedic entry on the same subject. So um, Patricia and I talked, and she's not been able to be at these morning sessions because she's teaching during this time, but uh, we, we talked about adding something to the site about the use of these interactive simulations by educators and, and research about that. And so she's done a lot of work of, of adding basically a source list of different research um, if, you, if you can see it there, it's the, la le the research on use, thank you, use of simulations. She's added a lot of entries about saying what kinds of research has been done on, have had been done on this. And as I hadn't, haven't talked with her a bit about it, so it's no critique of her, but I'm just interested in the things I was looking for is I was, I was researching um, articles that had been written about the, the value of simulations or the effectiveness of simulations. And, thinking I was needing them to put together something that was about different perspectives on that and perhaps even the difference between open education simulation resources and the pro-profit ones. And I, 
so I've collected a lot of material, but I haven't really written it. And then, and I think one of the things I was stuck on was, am I creating a kind of literature review of this stuff, or is that even appropriate? So that's, I think, where I'm a bit stuck. OK. Um, I think there's lots we can, I think that's a good, good jumping off point. Um, so I, I think it's a, I think it's a legitimate question, and I don't want to jump to an, an answer to it that's too, uh, that that kind of glosses that over. Um, but what, what what stands out to me is that this is the kind of discussion that is really appropriate to Wikipedia itself. That that um, that other Wikipedians will have opinions about this, and will ha and will have perspectives on how it relates to Wikipedia's defining principles uh, and sort of where those lines are. And what I would really encourage you to do is to upload, you know, to, to enter some of the work that you've done, maybe not in the article right away. Um, you know, maybe use the, the talk page for the article to post uh, like a list of the, you know, you could leave a, a, a comment at the bottom of this page where where you put in a, a list of some of the resources that you've been assembling and put it as a question out to other people looking on the page. I know in this case that's, um, you know, that's basically uh, just Trish and myself uh, because this is an article that not a whole lot of other people have come to. But once you put it here, it's always, um, it's always possible to direct other people's attention to them. So, so one thing that I, I, I guess the way that I would imagine this going is you could put a comment like that there. You know, take take a little time and sort of think about what is the most central question that you kind of want to start off with, uh, and you know, type up a, a, a paragraph and maybe put a, a couple of links on this page. And then you could go to Wiki Project Education, where we've listed this article as being you know this is this is a, a place where people interested in education will go to have these kinds of discussions. So you could click on. Wiki Project Education, and then on its on this Wiki Project's talk page, and leave a note at the bottom of this page linking to the FET page, and you know with a shorter version of the uh, say I've been working on the the FET article, and I'm trying to build it out with information about research on simulations. I'm still getting used to Wikipedia and wondering what the best uh, the best approach to that is, and then link to the more you know, the more detailed question, and you'll probably find that a few people come along who are interested more generally in education and are maybe more experienced with Wikipedia and help you through that. Does that make sense? Is that a is that an approach? That, uh, that sense? sounds good. I'll I, I won't be doing much for the next few days. I'm moving, but I I think that's a good plan, and I'll take it up. Okay. Excellent. And and please feel free to. I, I know there there are several steps in that that might be a little confusing, so. Um, feel free to leave a note on the class talk page if you get stuck, and we'll get you through it. Peter, we're having an interesting discussion, and I am. I don't know if you're watching it right now. I'm but, just kind of trying um, to catch up, so why don't you catch me up? <laughs> well, it was a tangent of what I believe was being said right before I got back to the computer about notability. Um, or um, I'm not sure exactly what sparked it, but it's the issue of new users and whether they should preferably take on uh, their own new article or work on existing articles. And, and you've heard me say, and I believe I've heard you say, that it's generally a good idea to kind of cut your teeth on existing articles to get a feel for it. And also, my particular experience based on the experiences of our students is that their their seriousness as a Wikipedia editor um, is determined, like, uh, is judged by other editors based largely on their contribution history. So if the first thing a new user does is start a new article, that's like a really good way to get someone to come in and say, nope, <laughs> this doesn't right. match Wikipedia and notability guidelines at all. We're taking this down. And it's like kind of because you're a new user and you have no, you haven't really established any credibility. Whereas if you've been working on other stuff for a while, um, uh, that's less likely to happen. You're less likely to attract the judgment yes. of other 
editors. And then also, I was we we okay. have, however, had a number of students build their own very successful articles from the ground up, and typically they started them on their in their sandbox, or they consulted with us all along the way. When I say us, I mean Pete. Like bring it to lab, and we look at it right now together. And um, they haven't had problems per se when doing it that way. Yeah, did, I, did, I, did I say most of that correctly? Yes, uh, I, I want to expand on a couple of things there. That's that's a great a great overview, though. Um, well done. Um, the so theoretically, it really shouldn't matter too much if you're if you're um, you know, as long as you're editing within Wikipedia's policies and uh, being transparent about what you're doing, it, it shouldn't matter whether you're a new user or not. Um, but in practice, um, familiarity with those policies and the and kind of the way that that articles develop on Wikipedia helps a great deal. And the the more you can project um, sort of a sense that that you know what you're doing, you know, and, and genuinely project that sense, uh, the less interference you're going to run into early on. And so having an account history is, is one in very important piece of that, of that puzzle. If you, if you're already very experienced with, uh, with, you know, if you've worked on a lot of different wikis before and you've really, you know, you've read up a lot about Wikipedia and you feel very, uh, very comfortable with it and you kind of know its policies pretty well, you might be able to start off uh, you know, creating articles left and right and really run into no problem because you're not doing anything else that triggers people to um, to even sort of look and, and wonder what your contribution history is. But that's kind of an unusual case. Um, the, uh, I, I want to just, uh, let's just click on, I'm just going to click on recent changes just to give you an idea of sort of what, um, what this looks like from the perspective of uh, a more experienced Wikipedian. Um, so as I, I don't know if we've actually if I've drawn attention to the recent changes link because it's not on, on English Wikipedia. It's not a very useful tool for most purposes because uh, there are you know more than a, an edit per second. So every time you click on this, if I click on it again in a, in a moment, there's going to be a whole new list of changes. But this is something that it, it's very much like the watch list or the uh, user contributions history. It shows you a list of the most recent edits to Wikipedia. So there are, there are people who, like the way that they choose to contribute to Wikipedia is by watching recent changes and looking for vandalism or misguided edits of various kinds and essentially protecting Wikipedia from, um, from people who are actively trying to interfere with it or people who don't really understand what it's there for. Um, and so they'll Look at recent changes and refresh it every minute or two, and and look at edits the way that we have so many times by clicking on the diff link uh, or at the history screen. So one of the things that stands out uh, most prominently is whether someone has a red link or a blue link on their screen. So if I were doing this, if I were kind of trying to run through and look for problems, I might be more inclined to look at the ones where the user the username has a red link or where it's an IP address where they haven't created an account. Yeah, you know, even for me, that's kind of a red flag. Whenever I want to look at a history of an article and see right, who's been working on this, is it being worked on actively, is anyone working on this article seriously, if they haven't put anything on their user page, that red jumps out. And if they have, what was the second thing you said, Peter? There's something else. Well, well, if they oh, have yeah, it's an IP address. Account at all, if it's an IP address, yeah. Yeah, then it's just like, oh, I, I, I automatically feel dismissive of that user's contributions in no, in no kind of <laughs> unconscious knee-jerk way. Because now that I know, you know. Because some, sometimes people are, are hiding by, by contributing from an IP address or disguising their identities, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. most experienced Wikipedians at least put a few words on their user pages. So. Which I think most of most of our class has by this point, so that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But it's also it's also helpful to to look at the country. The, um, right. The so that's sort of the, the next layer. This way. So if I were if I were looking at this, like I might notice that uh, that WikiU 2013, there's there's has no user page, but there is a talk page, which might indicate that someone has left them a message. Maybe 
maybe complaining about his edits or maybe praising his edits, I don't know. So I might look at his talk page to get an idea of what um, what kind of interactions this person has had. And I also might look at the contributions to see if is this the only edit that this person has made since creating the account. No, it's not. They've, they've made a lot of edits. They've made at least 50. Uh, you know, and I could go down here and look further back if I wanted to do more deeply into it. Uh, and then also looking at the, the talk page will give you an idea. So someone welcomed him or her to uh, to Wikipedia and so you know there's a message left on their page but it looks like they haven't had a whole lot of interaction. So um, I guess back to the 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 question of starting uh, the way that we've structured this course we've tried to uh, guide you towards making some edits to existing articles uh, and to your own user page and things like that before getting to the question of whether to create a new article. Um, and that's, uh, this is really the, the main reason for it. Um, but as Sarah said, we have had a number of students that have created new articles. Uh, the, actually, the, the FET article is, is actually a really good example, the one that we were just looking at, um, because I want to just jump back in the, I, I don't know if I can find this really easily because there's been so much work on it, but, uh, well, let's see, yeah, okay, so if we if we just go back uh, a month or so, you'll see there were some flags added to the top. So someone did come along at one point and uh, the, the the main issue was that this article was primarily written by people who had an affiliation with that. Um, so the, you see the first thing here is a major contributor appears to have a close connection, uh, which often is a flag that it's not written in a neutral way. So that's, that's the reason why someone would flag it. Um, and so in this case, uh, this is all on the talk page. Um, so it's number four here, problems due to conflict of interest editing. So this person left some very detailed comments and he didn't actually come back to uh, to engage in deeper discussion about it, but um, Trish and the others who have worked on the article basically went through piece by piece and tried to address all of those concerns and eventually uh, left a note further down saying, after making a couple of efforts to reach out to him, um, put in this section that said, you know, basically I've made every effort to uh, to ask you to come back and look at this, I feel that I've addressed all of these things, so I removed the flags. So that's um, that's a good example of the kind of thing that can come up. I, th I think uh, if 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 Trish was here, I think she would probably attest that it was it was frustrating when those when that was first left. Uh, but in a way, that's really a it's a very natural part of the evolution of a Wikipedia article. Um, it's a very common occurrence that you'll you'll put a lot of work into something and then someone will have a problem with it and they'll disagree about something. And I think the natural reaction to that is 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 one of you know surprise and disappointment. Someone someone isn't appreciating all the hard work that I've done. And yet there are many ways to get through that. And it's um it's it's in if if you're if if you can kind of keep calm and keep focused on um on having substantive discussion, you'll usually get through to a point like this where the article is actually improved as a result of that kind of discussion and, um, and you know, and everybody is, uh, is happy with the result. There is, uh, I guess, the, the other major point relating to this is the articles for creation process. This is something that we have uh, kind of uh, de-emphasized in this course, but it's worth knowing about. Um, if you if you want to create a new article and you're not uh, too confident, uh, you know, if, you, if if it's your first article or if you uh, if if you want to make sure that someone reviews it, say if you were not in this class, this is a tool that's designed for that. The reason that we, well, there's there's really two reasons that um, that we don't really encourage students to use it. Uh, number one, uh, you know, this is it's it's sort of a crutch, right? This is sort of it's something that. Um, it will give you feedback, it will give you input, but it's something that's designed to address the problem with people not really getting a proper introduction to Wikipedia um, and not really knowing what they're doing. So hopefully we're giving you the background that allows you to do it in, um, 
in the way that an ex a more experienced editor would, so you wouldn't need this crutch. Um, the other the other reason is that in practice, this can actually be yet another way of signaling that you're not a very experienced contributor and making making whoever reviews the article a bit less inclined to publish it. It's kind of ironic. It's designed to help new users, but in practice, sometimes you'll find that um, that the people reviewing the articles find rather small technicalities to object to and uh, will turn down an article two or three times when if you just published it on Wikipedia, um, it might not get that kind of response. So it's all, all of these are are uh, judgment calls and they really they vary very much from one experience to the next. Uh, so definitely feel free to use this tool if, uh, if this is an attractive approach to you, um, especially after the course is done. Uh, if you if you want a bit of support and uh, you know and and we don't have an active course going on, this is another way to get it. So um, let's see what's yes, hi Trace. Uh, glad you're glad you're here. We've uh, we've had a little bit of discussion about your OER list article, and uh, I put something on the class talk page. So you may want to review that in the archive when we're done, or check in with Sarah, not Sarah G. So let's see. I'd I'd like to hear from someone. Oh, okay. So Jade, you've got a new article book at Object Learning for, or Open Learning for Development. Okay. So okay. So this is something that one of our students in April was looking at, and let's see, I just want to look at the, the history of the article, because this just started back in 2008, it looks like, and I, I don't think any of our students have actually worked on the article itself. It looks like there's only been a couple, so Bostonian is not a familiar name to me. Um, so I think just this review that, uh, that Luke did in April. Okay. So, uh, Jade, why don't you, do you have a microphone? Do you want to just uh, tell us what's brought you to this article and what you're thinking about doing with it? Okay, I'm going to just... Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna just okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, yeah, if you can go back to the article. Um, the reason why I was thinking of focusing on this particular article is because it was on, I, and I forgot which article I was looking at. I don't know if it was <clears throat> the OER article, but that listed um, a number of, of OER or open education related articles. I forgot now. But at any rate, that's how I came to this particular article. And I noticed if I, if I, Go by, you know, lots of the stuff that we've learned so far in class. Um, this notability <laughs> kind of doesn't, and, and maybe notability is not the right word. Anyway, the fact that that the only resources or references that are used are UNESCO's resources, but yet Open Learning for Development, or at least UNESCO itself seems to be a um, kind of like a foundational part of this whole um, area. So because this is not my field, I'm not sure where do I even begin with this. Do I, 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 had, I had the idea at one point of, of maybe trying to put this into another article. Um, oh shoot, I think it was Open Education Practices. Okay. Yeah. That Clem was yeah. working on, um, but I, I didn't hear back from him, and I didn't pursue it. So okay. Anyway, that's okay. that's my dilemma. Yeah. Not knowing where to start. So I th I think that's that, that's a great train of thought for something like this. If your question is whether the article even meets the notability standard to begin with, that's you know, really, the 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 logical that that's the next 
the next step that you should come to is, well, where might it fit in somewhere else so that uh, if this article were deleted or if nobody finds it because nobody is specifically searching for this term, uh, where would it make sense to have some information about it in an existing article where there's where there is no question about notability? So uh, that's that's definitely the right way to think about it. Um, I am not uh, actually specifically familiar with this effort, so uh, it's it, when you um you know when the when the question is is notability, the the best thing to do is to go out and look for independent sources. So I haven't done that for this. I don't know if you have. Um, I can just do you know a really quick version of that right now. Um, or I would just I would search on the the title in quotes. I would uh, probably go immediately to you know often the the general um, uh, often the general Google results aren't that helpful, but the news results can be. So this tells us that uh, it doesn't have results for it in quotes, so it only has the words not connected exactly like that. So my next step would be to go to the archives to see if that uh, pulls up places where it is actually uh, the entire phrase is listed. And oh, I think I have to put the quotes back in now that I've done this. And I'm, really, I'm getting the Wikipedia article, and that's it. Um, so my uh, the next thing would probably be to look on Google Scholar or to look in some uh, some databases or something like that. Uh, and so my I'm not going to go. I would probably want to do a little bit more of this before I reach a strong conclusion. But so far, what I'm seeing does uh, it, it supports your take on it, Jade. I, you know, I, I'm kind of coming to the same conclusion that this might not be notable. So. Um, what an experienced Wikipedian would probably do at this point would be to uh, either to put a, a flag at the top of the article saying that it might not be notable, or open a discussion about that on the talk page, uh, leave a, a section that's maybe titled notability, uh, and and saying that other people, uh, encouraging other people to point out sources if they think that it is notable, uh, or the more uh, the more sort of extreme step that you could take would be to nominate this for deletion. Uh, to say, I don't think that this article uh, meets Wikipedia's notability standard. I think it should be deleted. Uh, that's something that, um, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to think what to say about this. It's something that, like, I, I do rather routinely as I'm browsing around Wikipedia when I, um, and, and I think most Wikipedians do as you find, th because you will find things that are, you know, even less, um, e even less notable than this. Uh, and so I, I think of it as just a, a part of sort of feeding the general health of Wikipedia is to keep things out that really just don't belong there at all. It's something is just, uh, is someone's, uh, you know, someone's band that, uh, has never played a show, and it's just you know they they practice in their basement, and they put up a Wikipedia article about it. Uh, you know, I think you're you're doing Wikipedia a service by removing that, so that when people come to Wikipedia and they read about a band, they have uh, you know some expectation that it actually you know has 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 drawn some attention in the world. Um, but there's no there's no requirement to do that either. If that's if that feels like an uncomfortable step, if you don't want to uh, to sort of uh, challenge someone else's view that this should be on Wikipedia and get into that. There's of course no reason that you uh, that you need to do that. But um, in any event, though, it's I'm, I'm trying to come back to this question of, of weaving it into the Open Educational Practices article. Um, it's always going to be a possibility that someone will come along and do that, even if you don't. So if you can weave this into another article that you don't think will be deleted, then that will sort of ensure that something about this concept is covered even if it does get deleted down the road. Um, so if you think it's an important concept, even though it maybe doesn't fully rise to that notability threshold, uh, it's much more acceptable to put something about that into another article as long as there's some kind of uh, referencing for it. So it's I think a bit ironic isn't it, to think that the course might teach people to remove articles. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to create articles. But that could well be the outcome of this discussion. Yeah, right? I, I don't want to, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to delete it because somebody had an idea 
it <laughs> and put it up there. So I so I think maybe then from what you what you've gone over and thanks, Pete, is um, I'm thinking that what I'll do is try to find the information about this but, and figure out if it is a concept or a program or just somebody just came up with that. Um, and then get all the information I can first into what exists and then take a look at it and of course put a thing on the talk page and maybe I can get other people to look at it too and then maybe I can work together with other people to figure out is this really a notable, you know, once the information is down, um, is it notable enough to stand alone or, or start trying to move it someplace else? Yeah, that's good. And especially the part about leaving something on the talk page, um, you know, just as like as as we start to look at this, uh, you know, I think you can, I think everyone following along can see here one of the um, things that I I think we're all sort of naturally drawn to is what did this what did Luke think about it? He took a look at this this article and had some thoughts about it, and he left a note. And even though it was several months ago that's one of the places that I would start in getting a sense of how someone else is thinking about the article. So feeding that process is is an important part of this as well. So Jade, if you put some, some thought and do some research into this, um, being transparent by leaving a note on the talk page is a really good thing to do because you never know when someone else might come along and, and want to follow up and, uh, and, and weigh into that process of, of deciding what to do with this article. Yeah, I feel like I need to leave a follow-up note on my original note because I, I was just like, yes, yeah, student, go for it. <laughs> okay. but, you know, this is just the kind of thing that you write down once and it's there forever. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, and but, it, but there's always the the chance to follow up, and I think that's it's it's it's. Again, it's, it's another thing that's very common on Wikipedia is that you might have sort of a spur of the moment thought. Um, that, you know, in, in a case like this, I would imagine you were probably looking at what a number of students had done and, and taking a, you know, a, a fairly quick look at just that they had fulfilled the, um, you know, the basic idea of the review. Uh, and you weren't really offering him a substantial consideration of what he had to say. And that's, that's perfectly natural. People will say things kind of off the cuff all the time on Wikipedia, and it's always possible to come back to it and say, you know, I've put some more thought into it. And, what about this or what about this? I just did that. Wonderful. So, oh, and I see Sarah G has is listed on another, on the open learning page. Interesting. So this is another, oh, okay. So, Sarah, I wonder, I'm curious how you found that it's linked there. Um, did you did you do a search on Wikipedia or what's what because this is a useful thing. You Googled it. Okay, great. So um, yeah, figuring out what else links to it on Wikipedia is a is a great uh, way to think about what other articles it might fit into. So this might be a better choice or an additional choice uh, for putting information about it into another article in addition to the open educational practices article. And, uh, and let me just also point out a way to, um, to find out within Wikipedia. So if we're looking at the article that we're thinking about, the Open Learning for Development article, in the toolbox on the left-hand side, the top item is what links here. So this shows us all the Wikipedia articles that link to this page. And uh, the first thing that I'll usually do, especially if there are a whole lot of entries, is restrict this just to the article namespace. So I'll just choose article out of this list here under namespaces and click the go button. So actually there's only two articles. So the World Health Organization is another one. That apparently links to open learning for development. Uh, so another one to look at. Uh, and then you might also go back to look at what links there because you might find uh, you know, here we see a couple of user pages are linking to it. So you might learn what, what users have talked about the page or have expressed an interest in it. Um, you know, you see that it's a part of our Communicate OER project, things like that. So that can all kind of be, if you're looking for people to draw into the discussion, if you wanted to have a, a discussion about its notability or about 
um, how to incorporate it with other things, this would give you some ideas of where to reach out to people as well. Okay, great, uh, great topic, Jade. Thanks for bringing that up. Lots of stuff to discuss there. So who have we not heard from today? Glenn, anything you're uh, working on? Uh, have you have you uh, gotten back to the search engine um, that we've discussed in the past? Any thoughts about that? What are, somebody uh, maybe just give me a, give me a prompt here. What's what's something I can talk about, even if it's not a specific question? My my uh, sort of default for this is just poking around in the preferences and talking about some of the features you can find there. So I'd be happy to do that if if no one has a another suggestion. Class page. Oh, okay, so um, I think this round, this is something Sarah and I have talked about a few times. I think that I've maybe not designed this uh, as well as in the, the last round of the course. The, the, the main idea is that this purple box uh, has links to pretty much everything that you would need for the class. So the Teams page is here. It's not very obvious. It's in this, the footer of this, of this box has a, uh, has several important links in it, uh, and it's. Uh, I apologize for not having found a way to make this more prominent, but there's your answer. <laughs> um, I hope I haven't. Uh, it's it's it's. I'm glad you bring it up. It's uh, useful for me to know that these things are a little hard to find, and I better come up with a better way to link them in the future. Oh, good. Okay, I'm glad that was helpful for you, Trace. Um, another thing, with uh, you know, if there are any if there are any pages on Wikipedia, either like our course page or an article, uh, this is something that lots of people will use their user page for. So, actually, my my user page is a, a reasonable example of this. This is my demo account, but this demonstrates it pretty well. First, I I give a couple lines of introduction of who I am, and then I have a section for helpful links and resources. So I might just put um, that link to our course right there. And then it and then I know I can always get there just by going to my own user page. If I you know if I forgot what that acronym is, I can just click on that upper left link at any time and it's sort of like a built-in bookmark. Um, yes, that's a good point, Sarah. Uh, WT Wikisu will take you directly to the talk page. Uh, I'm going to just enter that here too. So. These are really useful little tricks, especially if you're, you know, if you find something that is a rich source of information and you know you're going to want to be coming back to it. Um, you know, I, I think an example is uh, like tables. Like uh, there are all these help pages on Wikipedia that are in, in, incredibly rich with information. Um, oops. So, you know, if you want to make a table on Wikipedia. Uh, there are a ton of different options. As you can see this is just an incredibly long page. There are lots of little variations on how you might do it. And so if, if you were just making a simple table this time, but you think you might want to make a more complex one in the future, this would be a good page to, um, to kind of bookmark on your, on your home page.
Okay, so uh, I guess we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, I mentioned going to preferences before. I haven't heard if anyone's interested in that, but I think I'll I'll just poke in poke around in here a little bit. Uh, this usually this usually something something interesting will come up. Uh, let's let's see. Let's go to let's go to the editing tab. So there are lots of options on the. Oh no. Let's see. I'm, I'm, so the, maybe it's the I, well. I guess gadgets is really where most of the most of the the options are, and this is because there. Uh, this is actually a, a really a, a fun thing I think about Wikipedia is that if I come up with uh, it, 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 there are lots of ways to kind of customize the interface of Wikipedia using JavaScript. So if you know anything about programming, you might be able to come up with a way that that kind of makes it possible to do things with fewer clicks or uh, or something like that. So people will develop little tools on their own. And if you find that it's pretty useful, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to add it to the preferences screen under gadgets. There's a whole system that makes it possible for, for people to kind of wrap up their custom JavaScript and present it as a checkbox uh, in the gadgets section. So a lot of the things that you find here, most of the things that you'll find here in the gadgets section are things that have been created by Wikipedians like you. They weren't, they weren't created out of some monolithic process. They were created by individual people and just kind of stuck in here in case someone else found it useful. So one that I, um, that I really like is navigation pop-ups. Uh, that will, uh, I'm going to just save that and visit a, a page. Uh, I'll go to, I'll just click on random page here. And let's see, where is it? Random article. So when you have navigation pop-ups enabled, if you hover over a link on Wikipedia, it pulls up sort of a mini version of that page. Uh, and it also gives you this actions and pop-ups uh, menu. So let's say I wanted to see the history screen. If, if I'm looking at this article and I see Egyptian and I want to go to the history screen of the Egypt article, I can just hover there and then hover over the actions article and then click on the history tab. And without having to actually click through, now I'm looking at the revision history for Egypt. So that can be a really useful way of, of kind of browsing around more quickly on Wikipedia. Um, I, I see we're really coming right up on nine o'clock, so maybe that's maybe I'll just leave it at that. I think that gives you, um, you know, a good general idea of the kind of thing that you can find uh, within the preferences. So I, I really would encourage you to poke around in here and see if you find things that that you like, and and tell your classmates about them too. If you find something that that's useful, this is a great thing to put a note on uh, on the course talk page and share with your fellow students something that they might like as well. So I just turned it off because I like to keep this account kind of gen generic so that when I'm doing demos with it, uh, people are seeing more or less what they do. OK, so we've reached the end of the hour. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday when we will have more guests uh, getting into more depth on Wikipedia articles. And um, I also look forward to seeing where you get with your with your projects. So please do, uh, if you if you haven't had a chance to log in and make any edits recently, just get in there and 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 uh, make a few edits to to an article. Uh, don't I, I think I guess what I'm what I'm trying to it's, I think it's really important to be active on Wikipedia. So even if you're not um, sort of feeling prepared to take on the big project that you want to do. Um, Look for an article where you can make a sentence a little bit clearer, or um, you know, add add a bit of connective tissue between two sections, or or leave a comment on the talk page, um, and then you know, do that today, and then come back tomorrow and see if anyone's responded to it. Uh, because I think getting a sense for that kind of interaction is one of the most important things we can do in this course. But it will only happen if you're if you're sort of continually feeding the process. Yes, I just pasted in the link. All right. To well, uh, thanks again for the bold concept. <laughs> yep.
Okay, excellent. All right, well, I'll pull that up on the screen as we as we go out. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, Thank for coming. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Sorry, week. I was late. Oops. Hey.